Kashi's Business Builders is proudly supported by our partners who are putting small business first. This week on Koshi's Business Builders, a juice maker that switched to hand sanitizer, the moving company that moved online, and how to innovate and pivot your business with success. Hello and welcome to this special series of Koshi's Business Builders where we're putting small business first. As you know, there's never been a tougher time for small business owners. In fact, more than two thirds have seen their cash flow crunched as a result of COVID-19. Nearly half have made changes to their workforce and almost 40% have changed how they deliver their products and services. Now, while these stats are alarming, they clearly highlight how essential it is for small business to innovate and pivot quickly to survive. Let's meet our first business that's done just that. Hi, my name's Jacinta and I'm the co-founder of Nectar Cold Pressed. Nectar Cold Pressed is a premium cold pressed juice that we develop specifically for cafes, restaurants and premium grocers. Really rich, intense flavours, to replicate what people used to do or sometimes still do in a cafe. To start the business, I was knocking on cafe doors, educating them about what cold pressed juice is, why it's different, why the flavour is so different. The cold press process is a slow form of juicing. It's fed in at a slow rate. There's no fast spinning blades. The ingredients is crushed and then pressed by a hydraulic press. And so it slowly, the juice drips out the bottom, literally, into our barrel in which then we bottle from. So it allows all of the nutrients and enzymes to actually stay intact. There's no heat, there's no friction. So the juice coming out is a living juice. It is such a great story and a great business. It really shows how you can take an old fashioned product like fruit juice into the future with innovative technology and design. But it doesn't stop there. Nectar cold pressed, also had to rapidly pivot when cafes and restaurants suddenly shut up. Co-founder Jacinta McComb joins me in the studio. Jacinta, thanks for joining us. What happened to your business when COVID-19 hit? Literally, it was an overnight stop. So we had distributors ordering juice. We had a cool room full of juice ready for, you know, at least another two, three months of good trade. And just over that weekend, it was finished. So what was your initial reaction? When all the government started announcing their grants and things like that, we're like, okay, this is obviously potentially gonna hang around for a while. We need to start thinking about options. So what did you do to innovate and pivot? We had a contact that we had been contract manufacturing for in the industry who actually pivoted also and produced hand sanitizer. So they're a local company, we could get the stock off them and we had all the machinery to bottle and label. So right. it was quite easy to get the bulk stock, bottle it, label it, and then sell it online. Okay, that sounds simple, the way you're explaining it, but how difficult was it to pivot into, into a hand sanitizer, another product? We had to do it. Like, we had no cash coming in. We had a factory, we had employees we wanted to keep, you know, because even though nothing was happening right now for juice, we knew it was gonna come back eventually. Right. So pivoting to the hand sanitizer was our number one priority. But then the problem is everyone went into hand sanitizer. They did. So you had to pivot again. What did you do? Look, for honestly, for two to three weeks, we had awesome sales, which generated great cash flow for us, which was exactly what we needed. And we just then focused on supplying our existing contacts. So people who needed it, who couldn't suddenly get it from their um, existing suppliers, and then over the third week, fourth week, you could see that everyone started to get back the normal sanit hand sanitizer. Like, so really, it was a three week project for us. We got the labels, we got the bottles, bottled it, sold as much as we could, which generated us enough cash flow to keep the doors open and keep our staff at That's work. That's fantastic. Good to see you, Jacinda. Thanks so much. Now, after the break, the Chief Executive of the Council of Small Business Organisations Australia joins me with his advice for innovating and pivoting with success. But first, Let's hear from another one 
of the many great businesses from our Small Business First directory and go and find one near you to support. Hi, my name's Pruaja and I'm a personal branding photographer. I would like to offer you, from my website, seven steps on how you can nail your online brand consistently. This is so you show up to potential clients so they can begin to trust, know and like you and you can grow your business. Song Group, which is a consultancy specialising in change and transformation. Are you ready to refresh your approach to change? Well, in just 15 minutes with me, you can ignite that spark for any transformation. Go on, book your place now. It's free, but for a limited time. Head to the website to get your business listed and to see some great community deals on offer. Now, as small business owners, I know you're all extremely time poor and constantly wearing several different hats. So to help you work through the myriad of legislative and regulatory changes, I'm joined by Peter Strong, the Chief Executive of the Council of Small Business Organisations Australia and a small business person himself. Pete, good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you too, well, although I see you a lot on TV, of course. Yeah. <laughs> now, what's COSBOA been doing to get businesses supported and equipped to innovate and pivot successfully during this time? Well, as you know, our members are associations. So we've been working really hard with associations such as the, the, the news agents or the hairdressers or the master grocers, etc., and working with them about what they're doing with their members. The, the leaders of these associations have really stepped forward. They've all been sharing information with each other about what their members are doing, how they're, they're as you say, pivoting, how they're supplying their services to customers, who's going well, who's not. And um, what are some of the more interesting success stories that you've seen when it comes to being innovative and pivoting fast? Well, we've heard about people that have uh, been making gin and things and of course they're making hand sanitizers and those sorts of things and that's been fantastic and they've done that overnight a lot of restaurants and uh, cafes have, have been quite successful in very quickly changing to uh, home deliveries or pickup and i've heard of quite a few little coffee shops who of course closed their their, uh, their 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 cafe area but they've said that they've sold more coffee than ever just coming out the, at the front of a hole in the in the in the in the door and they've been going really well because they've been able to supply what people want. Uh, we've heard about um, uh, news agents uh, who have uh, very quickly worked with their um, their customers to make sure they're getting what they want, they're getting it online or they're getting it delivered. Um, people have responded incredibly well. Um, listen, with the government, um, have they been doing enough in terms of the resources and financial support packages that it's offering small business owners? It's extraordinary what they've done, David. The, the JobKeeper package, and I know they had this over, you know, overestimation, but when you're doing things really, really quickly, that's what happens, and nobody was hurt by the, the, that mistake. But there's so much money out there, and I've heard from so many employers who've said they've kept their staff on. Speaking of that, what, what are some of the resources uh, COSBOA is providing to encourage business to innovate and, and pivot to stay afloat? Well, again, coming back to our industry associations, but some of them are larger than others, so they've put together um, plans for their members about how to, how to distance, how to um, look at different business opportunities, etc. And they've been very happy to come back to us and we've shared those plans and that uh, recommendations out with the smaller industry associations that might not be able to put their own plans together. When people have come across, and so we've been a, a, a conduit of information, so when somebody's come up with a solution for some problem, in JobKeeper about casuals or whatever, we've been able to pass that out to other associations who don't have that expertise. And vice versa, when it came to financing and getting money from the banks, we've got associations who are experts on that. So we took that information and got it out to the other people. So we've been really been a conduit of information. Yeah, that is fantastic. You're doing a great job. Uh, Peter Strong, let's keep in touch. Up next, Checkmate, the moving company that outsmarted the restrictions to win its ultimate game of survival. Hi, my name's Kate Christie and I am the founder and CEO of Time Stylers. So if time is the one thing that's getting in your way, then jump onto my website, click the do-it-yourself course and you can buy it right now 
for $29 instead of $270 using the coupon code Koshi. Hi, my name's Lyndall Harris and my business is Podcast VA. And we make the podcasting journey easier by offering a variety of done for you services as well as training. Head over to my website, podcastva.com and download the perfect podcast planning checklist to get you on the right path. Oh, another terrific business there from the Small Business First directory where you can go and find small businesses in your area to support, which are offering some great deals. And don't forget to get your own business listed as well. Now, you're watching a special series of Koshi's Business Builders where we're putting small business first. Time to move on to something a little different now and take a look into the operations of one of Australia's top relocation experts. Hi, I'm Paul Leaf Millam. I run the business here for Chess Moving Australia in Adelaide. Chess Moving Australia is a national Australian relocation company. It's fairly unique in its setup in that the people who own the business in each branch run the business in each branch. Nine individually owned companies join forces to rebrand um, in a single brand using the same software, same processes and procedures to become a national force. We deal a lot in corporate moving employees overseas to build submarines to many other areas, even from sequentially moving state library to sequentially moving state records. They're all big moves. We also do hotel fit outs, a large volume of commercial work. But we also move mum and dad around the corner. So our areas of expertise uh, are spread across many categories to ensure the, the business is extremely strong and viable. When it comes to innovating and pivoting in a crisis, it's OK if you don't immediately know what to do. That's why Paul from Chess Moving decided to bring in the experts for some help. Greg Nicole, Capability and Performance Manager at Census Yellow, joins us now via Skype from Adelaide to share that advice. Greg, welcome to the program. Like all of us, COVID-19 hit Paul like a ton of bricks. He called you in for some help because you already had a relationship with the business, didn't you? Yeah, hi, David. Thanks for that. Yeah, absolutely. We've been working with Chess since right back in the old days when it was just the Yellow Pages directory. Um, these days, we're a full digital service provider. So we look after websites, SEM, SEO, digital display, social ads, and of course, we're Australia's number one online directory. And companies like um, Paul and Chess, yeah, have evolved with us. So what did you do to assess his situation? Yeah, so look, I guess we looked at three things. So firstly, um, looking at the market and how the market had actually changed during COVID-19. Then looking at consumers and how they'd responded to that change. And then working with Paul and the Chess Group to pivot how exactly had the market changed? Yeah, well, for Chess, it was a big change. Obviously, a big part of their business was international and interstate moves. So, um, obviously, with the borders closed, that had locked out a lot of their business. So, for them, yeah, it, it was a large um, change to the market. So, how did you help Chess innovate and pivot in that regard? Did a lot of research and looked at what consumers were searching for at the moment and, and changed the focus of their business just for the COVID-19 period. So, for them, it was... Um, residential moves within the state for each different state. And also an interesting thing came about where businesses, corporate businesses, were actually picking up their staff, their computer, their desk, and their, all their bits and pieces and relocating it back to their homes, to their home office. And, and hopefully in another two, three weeks or a month, we're picking it all back up again and taking it back to the offices. What a smart idea. Um... And then how did consumer needs change during the restriction? Yeah, so from a consumer point of view, lots of confusion out there. You know, who's open, who's safe, what are, what are people's policies around COVID-19? A really smart thing that Paul did was put a pop-up on his website when people first came in um, that answered a lot of those questions. And it's all about just making sure that the consumer feels confident, trusts the business that they're, they're dealing with. Another thing that we actually helped him with, we wrote a blog um, around moving during COVID-19 with a whole heap of frequently asked questions that customers could also access when they're on his site as well. Mm. Uh, and did you find that consumer search behaviours had pivoted also? 
Yeah, absolutely. So part of the blog that we wrote was um, off the back of some research where we actually noticed that people searching for things like um, moving during COVID-19 or moving house during coronavirus actually started spiking. So we wrote this, this blog to reflect that change in behaviour. Um, and actually Google's picked up on that. So if you do a Google search now um, in most states for moving during COVID-19, um, Paul and Chess's blog, which was created by us, comes up on first page, which is absolutely awesome. Yeah, Greg Nicole, thanks so much for sharing some of Yellow's solutions to Chess's situation and great tips for, for all of us to put into practice, I reckon. After the break, your questions answered, our expert guests reveal the secrets to successfully innovating and pivoting your business during this crisis. Welcome back to Koshi's Business Builders, where we're putting small business first. Now, today we're talking about innovating and pivoting in a time of crisis. And here in the studio to answer some of your questions is Murray Herps, who's the Director of Entrepreneurship at the University of Technology, Sydney. And joining us via Skype from the Gold Coast, Kylie Baxter, an expert in financial services and managing partner at IQ Accountants. Welcome to you both. Now, Murray, first of all, pivoting, bit of a buzzword right now. Explain what it means and how regular businesses who have had a proven business model for years can go about it and do it quickly. Don't worry about the word. Uh, people get uh, worried about these new buzzwords. It just means using what you've learned uh, to change what your business does. And there's never been a more important time to do it. Uh, for the first time in human history, you can sit on a laptop with internet anywhere and address billions of customers. Kylie, as an award-winning MYOB partner, you would have been very hands-on in helping many businesses pivot financially in the last couple of months. What's the most crucial step they've had to take to ensure they pivoted successfully? Look, absolutely, the most important step has been to gain control and a full understanding of their financial information. That's particularly relevant for those businesses that were forced into closure, understanding what they had in the bank and how long that money was going to last them. So I saw a real disparity between clients that had already made the move to cloud accounting, had that financial information at a dashboard point of view, you know, perhaps they were using a program such as NYOB, compared to those clients, I guess, that were still moving on to the cloud and using some paper-based systems. Let's get into your questions. Uh, this one for you, Murray. Uh, Guantum from Sydney says, when innovating, do you put the customer or the product first? What's the process? <laughs> OK, so I think the most important thing is solving a problem you understand well for people that you understand well. And bonus points if you're solving an expensive problem for people where you know how to reach a large number of them. Uh, Kylie, Amanda from Adelaide asks, how can you possibly think about pivoting when dealing with having lost your business overnight? Yeah, look, that is really hard. And I've spoken to so many clients over the last few months in that exact position. And I think businesses of all shapes and sizes have suffered so greatly. But I think the interesting thing is that those that have chosen the opportunity have seen a real increase in their revenue streams. COVID isn't going away. We know the government incentives are finishing up in September, perhaps, and restrictions are easing. But that doesn't mean we're back to what we were before. So it's really important to continue to work on your business model and think outside the box and if you are feeling overwhelmed I'd just be encouraged you to try and reframe your thinking and looking at the opportunities that exist right now. Yep absolutely. Uh, Murray this question uh, for you Darren from Rockhampton says I'm not very tech savvy. Um, what role does technology play when it comes to innovation? Is it necessary? So do I need to step up my IT know-how? I think Australia has one of the best educational systems in the world. So wherever you are, if you're in Rocky, somewhere else, there's going to be great opportunities to learn things along the way. But I think also at the moment, the technology and the tools that people have access to is better than it's ever been before. So a lot of the time, it's just discovering what's out there. Um, Kylie, Alex from Perth asks, to pivot quickly, can I use my existing systems and processes, or do I have to start from scratch which seems all incredibly overwhelming. You need to be using real-time data, you need to be using up-to-date and daily figures and checking on them to make accurate and informed decisions. And if you can't, you need, the first step is to reassess your accounting and bookkeeping systems. Murray, this one from Sonia from Brisbane who asks, 
do you have to go to university or take a course to become innovative? <laughs> I think more Australians need to be willing to have a go uh, and to encourage their kids and their friends to have a go as well. Uh, and particularly in this area, I think you learn best while doing and not holding yourself back because you don't have those skills yet. Murray Herbst, Kylie Baxter, thanks so much for joining us today, helping to answer all of your questions. Keep sending them in, and next show we'll be doing a whole bunch of others. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for today, but before we go, our fabulous partner at Yellow is giving away a bunch of its digital booster bundles to our Small Business First community. Just head over to the website for details about how you can win one. And while you're there, make sure you list your business on our directory and also post a short 30-second video like the ones you've seen right here on Koshy's Business Builders so we can help you put your small business first. Coming up next week on Koshy's Business Builders, how technology and systems help you survive a crisis. Thanks again to our partners, Canva, Google, MYOB, Officeworks, Salesforce, Scottish Pacific and Yellow. See you then. Mm -hmm.